City Council, the Ashton, uh, Gene Ranieri, and, and Willette to introduce legislation in the next session, uh, a, 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 excluding Minneapolis from that. And put it back in this language at the state of the I, I think it should be even further. The City Council should ask the state legislature to allow Minneapolis to have an elected civilian review authority yes. with teeth. Yes. yes. Yeah, that, that would be directly accountable to the people because mm -hmm. anytime you have an appointed board, who are they really accountable to? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. the right board, and that's about huge issue. Right. Um, I, I also suggest that the, respectfully that the city council should consider the scoring system as part of the performance review process for the chief of police. And for every 50 complaints that are lodged, uh, you know, to the civilian review authority, it should res result in, in a potential 5% loss in pay. Responsibility for this debacle lies firmly at the feet of Mayor R.T. Ryback. Firmly at his feet. And by the way, it must be also said, all 13 members of the of the Minneapolis City Council who have provided him and continue to provide him with political coverage. Mm -hmm. All right. And by the way, Dave Baking here, the CRA itself is a fraud because this man right here was the only member of the CRA board who's doing anything. And the reason. 
I was respectfully street uh, who was actually really doing anything, I was kicked off by Mayor Archie Ryback with the assistance of the members of the Minneapolis City Council because he was being effective and wow. moving first in place. Wow. That's why he was kicked wow. off. Wow. The well, reason that I say right. Oh, there will be lots of chopping going on. <laughs> the reason I call this entire meeting, this entire process, even this area a fraud, is because you don't care what we say. You don't care what we think. That's been pointed out by Michelle and others. You don't care. We're going to a very cute little file and we'll blow it off steam. Blah 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 blah. I will just say this very quickly. My, my friend here, Dory and myself, went to a, um, a um, session at the Minneapolis Capitol on the safety committee hearing. St. Paul Capitol. St. Paul Capitol, thank you. <laughs> yeah, St. Paul Capitol. <laughs> Minnesota's Capitol um, yeah. safety yeah. hearings. Right. And while this proposal was being written, a bill was presented to the state residents to take away the powers of the CRA. And those members of the CRA were there at that, th at that time. They didn't say anything about this. So while we were do while they were doing this, this the members of the state house were being presented a proposal to give the CRA take away their power completely. This whole process is a fraud. Mm -hmm. These people are frauds, mm -hmm. pretending that they care. They don't, nope. and we know you don't. At Thank all. you. I'm gonna let Ken Gordon say a few words. I think you want to. Well, Mike was a hard act to follow. I have to say, and, and I don't always see exactly things eye to eye. I really appreciate uh, all of you folks for coming because I think it does show that you care. I, I also um, I also believe that people are trying to do good and do their jobs and, and, and they also care in the city. Um, I, that doesn't mean people don't make mistakes and that doesn't mean there aren't proposals that I might disagree with. Um, I really appreciate it that we have had the opportunity to have these public meetings. I'm gonna move over here just for a second so you're not all thinking your neck. Um, and it was really important that people turned out tonight. There wasn't that many people at the previous meeting, and it does actually make a difference. I think it makes a difference to staff, but what I wanted to say is it definitely makes a difference to the city council. And um, those of us who are interested in figuring out, well, what are some good points? What's some good strategy? How can we improve this proposal as it's coming forward? All of these things make a difference, and I'm really glad I could be here to listen and listen with Meg. And these will be expected to be brought forward to the Public Safety Committee at, in the report. These comments, we're also expecting to get the other cities research and the best practices research. In fact, we directed staff to provide that. So if it doesn't come to you sooner, September 12th, that'll be coming back to the committee and the committee's gonna have an opportunity to look at all this. The ordinance itself actually has a big process to go through as well. It still needs to um, be reviewed and, and, and looked at. Um, and I think it makes a difference what you say. The comments make a difference. The CRA board's response makes a difference. Um, there's a different strategy, and I'm not sure what the best approach is at this point, whether it should be all out delay, stop the proposal, or let's see if there, you know, there may be some traction. I just want to warn you, there may be some traction on the city council. Um, there is an author, there is a sponsor. But there also, and so there might be a strategy that I would say, let's see if we can improve it. What changes can we, we be made? The residency requirement is an easy one. You can start picking off some of these things that I think we get the council to say, we need to change that. It should go back in. Other things like that. the two to two, there are details and we get into those weeds. I'm looking forward to talking more to Meg about this and see uh, interested. Uh, Don's here also, he came. Talk to Don about it and say, well, but he's a sponsor for it. So make? let's be fair. He's a sponsor for this. Yeah. Thing, okay? yeah. He's in favor of it. So people yes. need to know that. Yes. Well, um, I've, I've really sponsored good. a lot of things myself, and I brought it forward and got input from my colleagues and from others and said, we'll make some changes and some modifications. We actually delight each other. So I am kind of Pollyannish, I think, and I always think that there's a, there's hope and it's worthwhile engaging, getting involved, showing up in meetings like this. Speaking your mind, a lot of you are very articulate, really appreciate kind of the perspective and the detail you put on it. Mostly all I wanted to do is thank you to do that. 
that, and you can keep talking, and you can also keep calling us individually, and we'll talk. Mm -hmm. I don't know this if there's time a for a couple more state. comments. We're 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 actually, it looks like we're, we're out of time, but I, thank you for coming. If you want to send some, if you want to send, let me just say real quick. I'll say this too. I'll stick around later if you want to if you want to say That's anything to me. I don't have to. Okay, so she's got a question about the document. Oh, it says this oh, I got a couple there things documents want to, want to be available to the public. That's what she's trying to ask. Me. When we bring it forward to the city council. Okay, so no members of the public are allowed to see it until it gets to the city council? Well, this is a working document. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to continue to add things to it. So let me just finish. Why didn't you tell us that beforehand? You're just saying that word and then you're still working let me just add, no. we will no. continue to no. accept and receive information. Email it to us. So we'll Email continue it to, to accept and receive information. So, excuse me, Council Member Samuels, can I just ask you a quick question on the record? Thanks. Okay, so um, do you affirm that the notification that this uh, policy was going to hit the City Council Committee, that that was in conformance with open meeting law and regulation in the city? Do you, do you affirm that like that was in conformance with how notifications for ordinances are supposed to work? Okay, like in terms of like the, the timeline in which it's unrolled, uh, do you feel like there would be more consensus behind these things if people were given a longer advance notice, or do you feel like... Longer than now? Yeah, longer than when it initially entered that city council process at the committee, like the agenda was published earlier, you know, what's, what's the minimum timeline, and do you feel like limiting that time affects the level of consensus in the community about policies? Like, in other words, if you announced it earlier, do you think you could get more people behind a policy? I'm not sure about that, but you get more in. Yeah, so, so why was uh, the uh, thing only sort of popped up on the CRA website? Like, there was never any notice in print or anything, like... Why did the timeline end up being so short between the public notice for when the policy went out versus when it entered the committee process? Why is it such a short period of time? Why couldn't it have been announced earlier? I mean, essentially, there's a sense that the timelines, the way that the city has been operated under numerous policies that have come forward, they sort of pop up really quickly. And would you say that that's true and that could be avoided somehow? That would be good if it could be avoided? Well, you know, we can always get better at things. Okay. Um, clearly, we, we uh, change that. Would you, would you support uh, amending the city's policy and advocating at the legislature for longer time periods for policies? Like, essentially, you know, for extending the time period? That's a bigger question than I have to look at. I have okay. About that. I okay. All right. Well, I, I think it, you know, I think that... Uh, Public policy would be formed in a more smooth way if the timelines were longer. You know what I mean? I'm not sure. You didn't go to the last meeting. This wasn't too smooth. Smoothness is not the goal. Smoothness is not the goal. Would you say consensus is the goal? Wisdom is the goal. Okay. All right. So you're not going to get consensus. Not on stuff like that. I mean, because, so for instance, this is a, this is a meeting of... Um, of um, folks who have strong feelings about uh, the current policy, mostly against it. There's mm -hmm. nobody here who's for it, mm -hmm. right? So, so it's just like I, sometimes I wonder, you know, if there are any Republicans. You know? I don't know. And then suddenly we have an election and 51 percent win. So it's kind of like, who do you hang out with? And I'm always surprised that there are so many people who don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to get a cross-section of the community mm -hmm. the best you can. And sometimes when you're with your cohort, you lose a sense of a larger mm -hmm. uh, of diversity of opinion. But again, if the timelines were more spaced out for when ordinances are introduced in the city, yeah, do you think I'm you'd saying. get a better cross-section, you know? like cross-section, yeah. Okay. But, but it might not be the cross the opinion that you like, okay. I like. Okay. On a, another topic, I just want to ask you, like, I was involved in do, putting together a video that, that showed the Drug Recognition Expert Program, DRE, um, you know, police officers across the state were coming downtown, and at least some officers were handing out drugs to people, and uh, officers in other departments got suspended, and we were, I believe, promised at that meeting, like, we would have some kind of report 
from the city about how that went down. Is there any report going on? We know the FBI has also been questioning people. Are we ever going to hear anything formally about whether or not the DRE violated policies or whether there need to be reforms? Like, where is there anything going to come back about the DRE program at all? I don't know. I okay. Don't know. Okay. All right, cool. Well, thank you for your time. Have a good one.